we have an interesting case here uh, sort of showed up today. Um, I'm going to have Dr. Renate sort of uh, describe to the case and show you what we're doing and what we've done so far. Um, and you can tell us whether you think we're crazy or, or not. So here we go. All right. So this is a 68-year-old female that presented to an outside hospital with lower GI bleed. Um, she has a history of diverticula and a CTA that was done outside showed that this was a diverticular bleed. Um, what we did, what we've done so far is we did a diagnostic angiogram of her SMA. We had already localized the bleed to the right, um, uh, right side of the colon. And uh, we were able to do a cone beam CT. It shows uh, the area of the bleed and the right colon as well as the vessel the that's bleed. leading up to it. Next slide, please. That's just a coronal image, basically showing the same vessel. So it was the second branch or the right colic branch coming off of the SMA. Sorry, Dr. Renati started going into what we've done so far. Basically, we did a diagnostic, uh, a diagnostic angio. We don't really see a good positive bleed on the angio. But what we've done for some of these patients, especially in the colon, if we have a really good CTA, um, we've actually started to do cone beam CT and use EmboGuide to try to correlate the two. Uh, Philips has good software. I think GE and Toshiba also have the same, where you can basically marry the external CT scan with the uh, cone beam CT and sort of embola and get into the same area. So the question really then comes down to is if we can pick off the right area, can we prophylactically embolize, specifically lower GI bleeds, um, more so in the colon? Small bowel, I'll be honest, it doesn't work that well, but for lower GI ble colonic bleeds, we've been starting to do this on sort of select patients, especially when it's a very obvious CTA. Um, and unfortunately, I can't show you the, the cone beam CT, but we sort of use the, the same sort of embo guide software. It's going to go up and then down. Um, there you go. Uh, the, the same embo guide software that we use for liver directed therapy as well. Sorry, Mona's really clamped this down. So what we have so far, I'll tell you what we have in this patient so far is basically a five French Sarah from the wrist. It's the second French here. Yeah. The you want to come I'm, down? I'm down. Okay. Um, and then we took a, uh, a low flow direction. When you say low flow, you mean 2.4 French? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was it. So this is a 155 centimeter microcatheter, right. which I think is ideal for GI bleeds because it gives you this extra five centimeters, which helps a lot when you're trying to get to these distal branches, uh, whether it's in the colon or, or sigmoid or something like that. Even rectal bleeds you can reach uh, pretty that's easily true. from, from so the So that's wrist. sort of the vessel we were going after. That's the, the vessel on the cone beam CT. Uh, in reality, um, Dr. Kim helped us make the, the embo guide here, but it's a little bit tricky at times, because especially you're trying to pick off colonic enhancement, you end up getting a lot of um, extra vessels. So it actually picked off like three or four four different vessels here. So this, you're going to have to sort of trust me here, but uh, this, can you, can you guys focus on that image right there on the bottom? Actually, uh, can you make the, comb, the 3DRA, the, we're going to try to make it bigger so we can show you. So there's, uh, actually show that. Show right that. There, the, the image on the left. So you can sort of see the, the territory there. Um, it's going to end up being the blue, the light blue line uh, that's going up to that area is sort of the, the territory that's bleeding. Um, so the question now becomes, like, what do you want to, what should we use as an agent? You know, we can use glue, we can use coils. Um, you can sort of see sort of the volume and the territory that we picked here. Yeah, so I think, I mean, because we're not exactly sure the, the exact artery, I think we're going to sort of drop the coil right here where we are. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much further we're going to really be able to get out before we start just getting too selective or too cute, um, as it would be. Um, so we're going to use a concerto, because obviously you can see we don't have a really long landing zone here, so we're going to take a really soft, short, uh, short coil and, uh, and go from there. So, I mean, right now, you know, she's rock solid stable. Her blood pressure is uh, 120 over 58. You know, she's hemodynamically stable. Her hemoglobin's been stable for a few hours now, so she's sort of out of that acute GI bleed setting, which is un unfortunately sometimes happens, right? You know, these patients may take a little while to get down, especially if they're stable. So again, here's just a concerto uh, coil. It's nice and soft. Um, it's fibered. They're short. And they'll go through a low-flow microcatheter. And we're sort of at a spot here where it looks like the last loop is sort of half in, half out of the vessel. So what we're going to do is actually, we're going to play a little trick here. We're going to actually detach half of it still inside the, the little yeah, bit still push. inside the microcatheter. And yeah. we're going to puff it in. For some reason, I find um, that when you do this, it sort of just sort of flies in. Hopefully, I'm still right. <laughs> so Rahul just did a manual detachment without the detachment device. So that's probably not what, yeah, what most people should do if they haven't used this product. Um, so, uh, so what I did is basically detached it and then used the pusher to sort of push it back in. 
um, out of that last little loop. And I think it's a contrast. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's. Yeah, I mean, we're injecting right on top of the coil pack. I'm not really going to, I don't really want to force the issue here too much. As you can see, we already got a little spasm in our vessel here. Um, I'm actually going to back it out all the way here. All right. Uh, Darren and Michelle, do you do your GI bleeds transradial? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's pretty good. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of overlap there because there's a loop, the colon sort of makes a loop there, but the vessel that we put the coil in actually is out. So uh, again, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming. Also, I want to thank our techs and nurses uh, and the AV team here. We wouldn't definitely be able to do these live cases without them. Sometimes they go smoothly, sometimes they don't. And uh, our techs are always on their feet trying to get us the, what we need. So again, I want to thank everybody and uh, hope we'll see you next year.